Oh my gosh, everything is happening. It's kind of hard to tell, but we're back. At Disneyland, look at that. This is an exciting change. Right now we are standing in what was the front of the old parking structure and look at this, the new addition almost complete. There are lights on, parking space lines. I can see a truck driving around down there. I'm not a construction expert, but to me, this looks pretty nearly finished. And if you've ever been down here when it's really busy and struggle to find a space in the structure, no doubt you're just as excited as I am. I'm pretty sure though that most people aren't thinking of the new parking structure right now. Most people are probably thinking of the new land, Star Wars Galaxy Edge. Nearly complete, and now finally with an opening date on the horizon. Just a few short weeks away. Dude, that is crazy. Seems like time has flown. It both seems like it's taken forever for them to finish this, and also like it was just like that. We were at D23 when they made the announcement about this new land. And soon we'll be inside of it. It officially opens on May 31st, 2019. Almost exactly two months from now. And to get into Galaxy's Edge when it's brand new is going to be very difficult. They are supposedly setting up some sort of a reservation system. Only guests with confirmed hotel reservations on property that day are going to get guaranteed access to Galaxy's Edge. And as you can imagine, all those hotel reservations were snapped up very quickly. Oh man. It's going to be very difficult to get inside for a while and probably pretty crowded when you do. But one thing's for sure, this is very, very exciting. I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to go on opening day. I have the ability to. But crowds and, and mayhem and the excitement, it might just be too much for me. We'll see. We'll see what happens. In the meantime, now that I know the opening date for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, I'm not really thinking about that. I'm really just wondering when this new wing of the parking structure is going to be open. I'm hoping since Galaxy's Edge is only eight weeks away. But they can make it to the finish line on this bad boy before that happens. Because something tells me there's going to be a lot of cars headed this way. I don't I don't know why I'm so excited about this. I just can't wait to ride those new escalators. Ooh, you know what else is changing? I almost forgot about. Downtown Disney. Now you may remember they were gonna make a bunch of changes down here. Namely, building a brand new luxury resort hotel, which is why they closed the Rainforest Cafe, they closed the ESPN Zone, they closed... Mmm, others? But due to disagreement between company and city, that hotel project has now been canceled. So while some places like Earl of Sandwich just reopened and just went back to business as usual, the ESPN zone down here is about to transform. On April 26th, Pop-Up Disney will officially open in this space. It's basically a fun pick photo op extravaganza. All inspired by and themed around Mickey Mouse, which is why the official long form title is Pop-Up Disney, a Mickey celebration. Basically, it will be room after room of epically themed photo opportunities. For which, yes, you will have to buy a ticket, but I gotta tell you, based on the concept artwork they've released so far, it's looking like these pics are gonna be sick. So if you're into that sort of thing, now's the time to pick up a tick to take a sick pic themed around Mick. I hear it takes just a couple of clicks. Man, if you take a look around here, you can see things are pretty much still going full Mickey. And that is because we are still very much in the midst of the Get Your Ears On Mickey and Minnie celebration. Since this is, after all, still technically Mickey's 90th birthday year. And I gotta tell you guys, for being only 10 years shy of 100 years old, Mickey Mouse is looking pretty fresh. Maybe he's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Or maybe, just maybe, plastic surgery? Oh, shh, shh. We may never know his secret. Happy birthday, Mickey. You are looking fantastic for 90. I can't believe that. I need all your beauty secrets. Call me. Call me later. Bye, Mickey. That is one handsome mouse over there. Anyway, what were we talking about before? Oh! Yes. About how Disneyland is kind of changing everything. Before we get back to that though, can we just take a moment to appreciate Disneyland things that haven't really changed? Like look at Main Street USA. It's a beautiful place. And still basically the same homage to small town American life at the turn of the last century that Walt Disney intended for it to be when it was built in the mid 
the... There have been a few tweaks here and there. Mostly a lot of cosmetic restoration. And some upgrading. And certainly the shops have changed a lot. For example, this is no longer an underwear slash lingerie store the way it was when Disneyland opened. Complete with a mascot known as the Wizard of Bras. I am not making that up. But for the most part, Main Street USA is still intact. Which is extremely, extremely refreshing. Because like we were talking about earlier, everything's changing out here. Side note, look at all these flowers in bloom. It is gorgeous out here today. The smell of the flowers. The beauty of the mountains and the construction walls. Tarps flapping in the breeze. Speaking of which, although they've moved this construction wall, the castle being tarped up for restoration is not really news. But there is a massive change coming to Walt Disney's Disneyland. Set to take effect pretty much any time now. That is really going to shake things up. Actually, it's sort of two big changes rolled into one. But to talk about those, we should get a little farther into Frontierland. Which, by the way, looks like it's undergoing a little tarpage of its own, huh? It warms my heart. They're making the old west brand new. <laughs> Shining her up like a new penny. And all these scrims and screens and construction walls you're seeing are all popping up around the parks for the same reason. They're trying to get everything pristine and perfectly ready for the imminent opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. The park's going to be getting a lot of attention around that time. They want everything to look picture perfect. And of course, they want everything open and fully functional at the same time because of the epic amount of traffic they're expecting. And it's because of that very same traffic that those two big changes I was talking about are coming. Change number one, for the very first time in Disneyland history, there will be zero, absolutely no, smoking allowed in the park. That's right, you heard me correctly. No mas fumar. And although it may have been Walt Disney's favorite activity, this means no more smoking areas in the park. Parks. Oh yes, and that includes vaping. Guests who love tobacco have until May 1st to come out here and enjoy a puff. But on that day, for the smokers, Armageddon begins. Armageddon for the smoker, of course. Now for those cowboys and cowgirls like Jesse here who don't smoke or have never smoked, they're probably thinking, what's the big deal? It should have been done a long time ago. But believe me, for those who enjoy Virginia's finest exports, this is some seriously disturbing news. Now guests will still have the option of going out to the hotels or outside the parks to smoke. But as for the smoking sections themselves, they are headed for the ashtray. That's big change number one. No doubt it will make some people very happy and some people very cranky. Mostly it seems to be a pretty popular decision. The main reason behind it, not just being that smoking is kind of out of style nowadays, but also to free up that extra walkway space where the smoking areas are because of the Star Wars land increase in traffic. Which is also the same reasoning behind big change number two. A change that has some people up in arms, but a lot more people celebrating in the streets. At the same time as the smoking area ban goes into effect, Disneyland will do the unthinkable and ban strollers. <gasps> okay, well, not every stroller. They're banning oversized strollers. Oh, that's right. The days of the double wides and triple long strollers are numbered. Millions of people shall rejoice at the news. Now listen, let me tell you. As a parent, I understand the need for strollers. I loved a good stroller. Perfect place for diet and snacks and all the equipment you need for a small human being to survive. But let's be honest here, gang. Strollers have gotten huge. I mean, would you look at the size of some of them? And doubling and tripling the size of strollers over the years means that even if they never had more strollers in the park, the strollers would be taking up two to three times as much space. It's simple mathematical sense. So from now on, strollers must be limited to 31 by 52 inches. No more double wides and triple longs and wagons. They'll have some way to measure them outside of bag check. And all these strollers must conform to that maximum size. Now, I totally understand why some parents who own bigger strollers than 31 by 52 inches might be a little bit miffed. But see, when I was a baby, someone gave us a big, plush, bulky stroller. And I very quickly learned that if you're bringing the stroller someplace busy like Disneyland, bigness and bulkiness is a serious disadvantage. It is extremely hard to maneuver large strollers through the crowd. So I swapped out our huge 
food stroller for just one of those cloth folding up strollers made everything super fast, super efficient, and honestly just as convenient, if not more so. Now, a lot of people, for obvious reasons, hate the strollers anyway. I've heard people, especially people with no kids, for years saying, get rid of all the strollers. But come on, guys. This is a place for families. Strollers are often necessary. But I think when it came to the size of strollers, people kind of had a point. It was starting to get a bit out of hand, so I think this is a great compromise, honestly. People who hate getting bumped into and having to go around strollers will love this new rule. There will be a lot more space in the walkways. And I honestly think that, like me, when most big stroller parents adapt to the smaller strollers, they're going to see it is much more practical cruising around in these smaller, thinner ones than dealing with all that bulk. So anyway, yes indeed, big changes. Now if you don't smoke or have no children, these new policies will probably not affect you. But to a lot of other people, trust me, this is big, big news. Kind of balances out though, huh? A lot of families pushing their kids in strollers past the smoking areas will be happy that the smoking areas are gone. Where a lot of adults without small children who enjoyed the smoking areas will be happy to have less gargantuan strollers around. So it almost balances out, huh? Okay, maybe not. Some people will still be cranky. But personally, I gotta tell you, I approve. Alright, now where to next? Oh, Honest John, do you know the way to the theater? I'm trying to find the theater. I don't want to go to school. No school. Just the theater for me. The quick and the easy way. Oh, thank you, Honest John. I'll be right there. Ah, that was helpful. Actually, you know what? The theater's overrated. There will always be theaters. But smoking areas, oh boy. Those are literally about to become more rare than the Yeti out here. Literally. Weird. Anyway, that's why before we leave, I wanted to take one more peek at the smoking. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, that's right. I forgot. They already got rid of this smoking area. And since the raft loading docks are all tarped up. That means that the Big Thunder Trail one is the last smoking section left. Now we all know Monstro's pretty happy about that. Monstro hates smoking. It makes him sneeze. It causes him allergies, you know. Also, probably could cause lung cancer too, so better off not smoking, Monstro. I'm with you, buddy. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against adult human beings doing whatever they want with their bodies. And even though cigarettes have not passed these lips for many years now, I do not judge anyone who likes to indulge. But I think we can all agree that whales should should not smoke. Oh, look at them. Poor souls. Just puffing away, looking so happy. They've got no idea what's coming. You puff away, friends. You puff away while you can. <laughs> <coughs> oh, man. Ah. You smell that, friends? That is the smell of the past. Goodbye, smoking areas. Actually, I just realized. I can't even remember when they got smoking areas to begin with. When I was a kid in the 80s, it just seemed like everybody was smoking in Disneyland everywhere. It was just part of the smell back then. Then they were in smoking areas, and then there were fewer smoking areas, and then they got smaller until there's nothing left now. It's a historic moment, all right. Sadly, Mark Twain would not approve. He loved himself a stogie. And Walt was, of course, a notorious chain smoker. But those were simpler times, folks. And them times is gone. All right, well, it's just about time to split. But before we do, there's another big change I'd like to take a look at. Just across the way at the other park, good old DCA. Come on, all the way back. Pay no attention to the beautiful celebrities. Not even the ones with round ears. Keep moving. Food and wine? We did that last time. Nope, we can't let ourselves be distracted by anything, because we have got to get our buns back. To Pixar Pier. And yes, we were just out here very recently doing food and wine and checking out some other DCA chains. But things move quickly out here, and something has changed again. Something new has been revealed. Take a look at this. It finally happened. Jesse's Critter Carousel has been revealed. And would you look at the shine of that cowgirl? That is one big toy. Whoa, look at it. It's the newest ride at the Disneyland Resort. And the wait time ain't too shabby. Wow, look at that. All Woody's round up themed with all the clues. And we're going to get on. What? Oh, no. We were going to get on board, but now it's broken. Well, it's not much of a surprise. That tends to happen with all new rides. At least it's cleared out so we can get a good look, huh? I mean, I'm sure you already can imagine what it's like to ride it. It is, after all, just a cleverly rethemed Triton's carousel. But I've always said, if Woody's Roundup was a real show, I would watch it. And how sick is that? Look at Woody's Western Town back there. All of these critters you can ride on. Look, look at this. There's a snake in that boot and even a stinky skunk 
you ride him backwards. He's basically pre-aimed. Ooh. Check that out back there. It's Sheriff Woody himself. Apparently they gotta get these critters out of Main Street. And back on out to the wild. Wow. That is awesome. That is great. Pixar Pier has got to be some of the best retrofitting I have ever seen. Incredicoaster, Jesse's Critter Carousel, all of these re-themes are fantastic. I am a pretty big Toy Story fan, especially of Toy Story 2. Next to the Empire Strikes Back, it may be one of the greatest sequels ever, ever made. Hopefully with Disney's new streaming platform, Woody's Roundup could become real because it would be really awesome to watch Woody and Jesse in puppet form. Well, or even in CG marionette form. Rounding up the old critters and hanging out with Stinky Pete. Hey, hey! They fixed it! It took a while, but they fixed it! Ooh, we're gonna ride it on the first day! Awesome! Ooh, also awesome feeling with the control booth there. Ah, yeah, see, look at the story. Jesse's gonna herd up these little critters. And keep them from overrunning the town! Oh, which critter are we gonna get? Someone got the skunk. Ooh, look at the armadillo here. Hidden Mickey! I think I'll take the deer since Allie couldn't be here, and this is definitely what she picked. Whoa! Look at this, Irwin over here's got the pink armadillo. Yes, we're doing this, man. Yes. We're doing it. Doing oh dear, I hope this ride isn't scary. All right, here we go. Jesse said, "Let's ride out and save the day," and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Woohoo! Look at that. It's Main Street. Howdy, Sheriff Woody. Get out of here. Oh yeah. What a fun one. Hey gang. A good time. I gotta be honest with you, I like this a lot more than Toy Story Mania. It's less hard on the wrist. Oh, I better hold on. Uh oh. Oh, I think it's over. Oh, dismount time. Goodbye, all you critters. It was fun hanging out with you. You're all a bunch of pals. There's a snake in my head. Oh, that was great. I'm so overstimulated now. Next time, I'm gonna get that skunk. All right, gang. Well, that was it. Our first ride on Jesse's Critter Carousel, the newest ride at the Disneyland Resort. Hey, look at this. Watch the goat when you go around. Oh, references. All right, gang, I've got a whole bunch of updates for you. After the credits, so stick around and I'll give you an update. On Allie's surgery, on some new sick merch that's coming out. You know, updating things. But actually, right now, speaking of Allie, she's still recovering from that surgery and I've got to get home to give her some food. But given that we waited in line and actually managed to ride Jesse's Critter Carousel, I think it's safe to say we've done our we can go home? Sleep? Wow. Bye-bye. Gosh, I just noticed this. Look at it. Don't quote me on this because I'm not sure, but I think those are parking space lights, meaning there will be a little green light on each side when one of these spaces is open. Just like they have at every good casino in Vegas and at Disney Springs in Florida. And finally, it looks like 21st century parking may be coming to the Disneyland. Mickey and friends parking structure. Let us hope that's what it is, because that would be exciting. Now let's go home and I'll give you an update. I think it's over, Irvin. Shout out to Omar for always being my friend in middle school and talking about these videos. Oh, okay. Sad you're not here. Woo. See, now it's time for the update. Here she is, eight days later. She's alive. How do you feel, Allie? I feel pretty good. Yeah, you can almost sit up. Yeah. 
She almost can stop taking most pain medication and almost sit up. Are you going crazy from being inside for so many days? Yes. But at least you had Mika to keep you company and scratch that thing next to you all day. <laughs> yeah. Plus you've been catching up on Full House, which is great. I have my snack stash over here. My feel better soon balloon. And flowers. Yeah. And flowers. <laughs> That's nice. From my mom. Mm -hmm. And look at this. <gasps> The new pins are almost here. April 1st. It's not an April Fool's joke. Look at them. <laughs> They're so piratey. They're so piratey, Allie. Are you excited about that? Yes. You get the very first one. Thank you. Just for you. Now that's some sick merch. If you want one of these sweet pins, pin number three by number, just check out the links below. April 1st. How many hours per day have you been sleeping? Too many. Too many? There's not too many hours to sleep while you're... Healing Allie, right Mika? Right. Mika, Mika. Oh, she doesn't want to be on camera. And you know what? Neither do we. We'll be back later. Bye-bye. Get your pin, get your sick pin. It's a sick pin, it's a sick pin. It is awesome, it looks so cool. It catches a pirate ship. There is a cloud behind it and I've got an eye patch on my eye. While I drive my ship, it's in sweet packaging. And it comes with a note that I will sign for you. Check it out in the links below. Goodbye. Cat, maybe click another video and enjoy things. Also, I will see you later for more adventures, more adventures, more adventures.